Real Agriculture's coverage of Agritechnica 2019 is brought to you by Bravant. Seed. Yield. Easy. Sean Haney here with Real Agriculture. We are at Agritechnica 2019 in Hanover, Germany, brought to you by Bravant. And right now we're in the Lemkin booth and we're joined by Tom Sanders. Tom, how's it going? Yeah, nice. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm doing fine. Yeah. So, Tom, Lemkin is known for, of course, tillage, uh, as well as you know, there's pull-type sprayers, there's a lot of technology in this booth, but behind us is a pretty impressive brand new, brand new machine. It's a self-propelled sprayer. It's, that, that's amazing. Yeah, of course, it is, a, it is amazing. It's, it is actually a big deal for Lemkin because yeah, it's the very first series production self-propelled machine of Lemkin. So, yes, we're taking this uh, very serious. So, tell us about the unit. Some of the specifications, some of the sizes. Uh, let's talk about it. Yeah, two. Yeah, obviously it's it's a Western European sprayer. So we want the cap in the front, uh, in particularly a harvest cap, um, engine behind the cap, so a little bit uh, down to the middle of the machine. So uh, one one special feature of this machine is that we have to get into the crop later and later in the, in the stages of of the crop because of different type of diseases. So people are looking for more ground clearance, but without the, the disadvantage of having a machine uh, very high on the road and instability problems. So what we did is uh, we made the machine in such a way that we can lift the carriage uh, from one meter twenty up to one meter sixty. So, and that gives you, with the boom movement, enough room to work with in tall crops like maize. Uh, tank on the back side with a side folded boom. So, in, in, in terms of, of, of capacity, it's, it definitely fits into the European standard. So, we, uh, we, we build it in two tank sizes. One is uh, 4,800 and the other one is 7,200. And maybe on long term, we think uh, about the in-between version. But for now, that, that is more or less the range we have. And then you, we talk about spray booms in width of 24 meter up till 39. Okay. And what's been the reaction from people here? We're on day three of Agritechnica. What have people been saying about it? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, our dealers or even customers are surprised. They knew something was coming, but they didn't expect it so fast. Uh, to be honest, it was quite fast how we developed it, but we didn't do it uh, all on our own. We, did, we, had, we got some help. So. What we did is there is a German company called Brautigam that is uh, known for self-propelled sprayers, but relatively special machine, very customized. Um, and more or less the, 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 this manufacturer, Brautigam, helped us to start off this project to more or less help us with the drivetrain, with engine, how to do all this kind of stuff. And then on the other hand, Brautigam was um, more or less searching for a partner to take over their sprayer part. So they, more or less our, our race here split because the machine's ready, their work is done. They're still on the background for the future and for assembly of vital components for us. But now we're totally on our own. So they helped us get the project going. Yeah. So that's where we, we are right now. Um, but it's a big deal, of course, from the technical point of view, from the service point of view. So um, we're going to start off very slowly, just with a couple machines, five to be exact in 2020. Um, and then we proceed in small steps, uh, because we are Lemkin here. Uh, our, our customers demand um, a very high service and a very good after-sales support. And obviously, we have to build that organization uh, around it. So small steps can only guarantee that also these first customers will be satisfied. Farmers are spending a lot of time in the cab, right? Because we are yeah. more and more we're using these sprayers. It's probably the the one unit on the farm that we use probably the most yeah. nowadays. So Talk about sense. some of the technology and the comforts in that cab. Okay, well you're exactly right. That that uh, I think if you look self-propelled, it it makes it's a self-propelled machine that makes the most sense because you use it all year round. So they spend a lot of time in there. So exactly, the cab is probably uh, very the, the most important part almost of, of, of the sprayer and how it's how the operation is done. So we, we spend a lot of time in that in getting that right. So we took a cab, not just a standard cab. We took a class from a, a very well-known German partner of us, the film uh, the company called Krone, known for the silage harvesters. And we just took, um, or in cooperation with them, we decided to take their cap because it fits our needs the best in terms of comfort and having, yeah, of course, air conditioning. And that, that's almost, uh, yeah, um, as I should say, standard. Um, but from overview, 
Yeah, you're not only spraying, you're checking your crops. You want to have yeah. good overview into your crop. You want to see your reels so that you are exactly in the rolls. You want to see around you very properly so you have a good sight at your boom and with a good lighting package on top that tops it off so that you can have optimal working condition. And that, that's just the cap. So if we talk about operation, um, if you look 20 years ago, the, 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 the standard harvester cap, you more or less had a big difference between the comfort of a tractor and going back into that self-propelled cap. Nowadays, it's, it's, it's the opposite. The self-propelled caps are almost um, a higher level than the tractor cap. So in terms of operation, you, you get, of course, nice controls, very ergonomic controls, but controls that you can uh, assign the functions yourself on the joystick. So no more talking, ah, the manufacturer did this wrong or that wrong. Now you, you can configure it yourself. Even with the terminal that is displaying the sprayer, we use an ISOBUS interface. That means um, as long as the sprayer uh, interface is loaded, it doesn't matter which kind of terminal you have. So as long as it's an ISOBUS UT, it's displayed there. So it could as might as well be uh, a different make. Of course, if we have to do it all on our own, we take our monitor that we use for ISOBUS machines called the CCI monitor. Yeah. What about the suspension? Uh, suspension, big deal. Uh, not only for the driver, of course. Uh, the suspension of the, of the chassis should be so good that the, the suspension on the boom doesn't have to work so hard to get a stable boom. So you get your droplets at the right place. So what we did, we have independent wheel suspension. If we go around the machine uh, right now, even uh, then we could look at this feature that it can move up and down uh, independently hydro automatically with the nitrogen accumulators and it's um, of course an active system so if I take a turn and the machine tends to yeah to walk to one side more or less uh, it will stiffen up that side so to quickly react but it's not a hill master of course so it's, if we're not there yet that we could level the machine that that's of course one one step to, down the line well, Tom, thanks a lot and congratulations on the new self-propelled sprayer. Yes, yes. Okay, nice to, uh, to do so. Thank you.